It's awfully fucking rich to be morally lectured to by the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, we went over all of their horrific atrocities yesterday for a 30 minute long fucking video that only briefly touched the surface of many, many, many of the different atrocities that have gone over or gone on in the past century of the Communist Party's rule. And then for them to come out and say that China thinks that US and Canada should really relook the genocide of indigenous people is awfully, awfully fucking rich, don't you think? A spokesman for the Chinese Communist Party attacked the United States and Canada for its treatment of Native Americans over the past several centuries. Really? Really? I think that we're doing a pretty decent job in comparison to what you guys are doing to a certain religious group, but let's see what he has to say, because I'm sure it's enlightened and definitely not tinted with propaganda, and then just one of these old school division tactics that'll definitely work on some subsections of idiots. Oh, I'm sorry. Society. CCP spokesman attacked the two nations saying that they do not have the moral high ground to comment on human rights abuses around the world and called for them to review and address genocide, racial discrimination, and forced labor that exists in two countries. Forced labor? Are you fucking retarded? Racial discrimination? Yeah, if you're white. And redress genocide. Um, I'm just taking a look. Uh, yep. Across the city there, there's a casino flourishing. And I think a quarter of me, yep, no, uh, all my limbs, uh, yep, everything is still here, so I don't think it was a terribly effective genocide. And as for the U.S., yeah, come on, same situation. <laughs> Just fucking stop this already. The U.S. is uh, in uh, no position to uh, wield uh, human rights as a stick around the world. Oh, really, bro? Spokesperson, or spokesman, sorry, <laughs> said... According to the Daily Wire, it needs to reflect upon and redress its own human rights crimes, including genocide, racial discrimination, and forced labor. The genocide committed by the U.S. on American Indians is a publicly recognized fact. Really? It was publicly recognized within the CCP? Okay, that makes sense. Even today, American Indians remain an invisible community and a disapproving minority. Can you see the obvious tactics going on right here? And it's fucking just beautiful right on the cusp of independence day they drop this little bombshell they've been trying to do this for a long time right you guys remember the little summit that happened up there in anchorage alaska when the chinese delegation just looked over at antony blinken and was like oh yeah you know that whole black lives matter thing you guys had over last summer haha <laughs> uh human rights you kind of speak on that it's like, well, that's fair. But try to drag this up. Mm, I see what you're doing there. And I ain't buying fucking any of it. And neither should you guys as well. Okay, because we had the calls up here. Oh, cancel Canada Day. And so many stupid fucking municipalities fucking bit down on that cyanide tablet. And hopefully all of them get fucking voted out in the next coming elections. Don't let that happen to your country, okay? I think that it's a lot more likely that the United States will not fall prey to this stuff, mostly because, yeah, we all know that Joe Biden's bought and paid for, but states' rights is a legitimate thing, and there are so many patriotic governors out there that it's never going to happen, okay? Up here in Canada, yeah, our premiers are much more just kind of middlemen. They can't really override anything that the federal government does in protection of their own province's rights because we don't have anything in writing that says that the provinces are in any means sovereign they're just kind of like middle management at this point yeah no they can tell what the municipalities can do but then the municipalities can overwrite what the provincial government does and then the provincial government just has to dictate what the federal government says as well but then only impose more taxes or more restrictions it's a fucking useless system we're going to compare and contrast what is going on a couple days after Canada Day, because, yeah, the violence and the fucking communist rhetoric here. One country's biting down on it wholesale, and another one is just having it encroach slower and slower. It's still coming, but there's still time to fight back on it. Because we got some real divisive shit right here. Oh, it's just proper representation. What do you mean? No, no, it's never been done before. Before the NFL said that they were going to start fucking singing the black national anthem before week one games in the 2020 NFL season, nobody, I'm pretty sure, or a very, very, very small percentage of people even knew there was a black national anthem. Now, do you guys even remember what it is? It's in like the second line of the first paragraph there. But 
who knows about this? Who cares about this? Who is this supposed to help? Who is going to hear Vanessa Williams sing at the Capitol and think, oh, goody, this is really going to reaffirm black lives? Like, fuck off. It's just virtue signaling nonsense. Because how long is it? Oh, okay, you got the national anthem. And then you got the black national anthem. Okay, then you're going to have to have what? The native national anthem? And then you're going to have to have the Asian national anthem because eventually they're going to have to address the fact that FDR put fucking Japanese Americans and Asian Americans in general in fucking internment camps in the 1940s. So they're going to have to drag that one up once all of this Black Lives Matter shit fucking dies down. So they're going to go ahead and reinstall that stop Asian hate. And then they'll paint FDR as being some sort of fucking right wing nut job. I vehemently waiting for those fucking conversations to be happening. You can already see them manifesting because they're just trying to rewrite history at every fucking term or turn rather. American actress and vocalist Vanessa Williams. I didn't know she sang, but I guess sounds right. We'll be performing the song Lift Every... Oh, you spelt it wrong because I remember there's an apostrophe in there. I don't think that there's the extra E. So Hill, Hurl, you guys did a... You did a racism. Widely known as the Black National Anthem. Uh, fucking x to doubt on that one. I don't think it's widely widely known. While hosting PBS's 41st annual, a Capital 4th celebration airing Sunday. Hope you're fucking asking for donations. Because if you're going to be relying on ad views, yeah, it's uh, not going to really fucking turn out anything impressive when it comes to numbers. Williams in an interview with the Associated Press. Remember when they used to be legitimate? Yeah, I can't either. Published Friday that said that she will be singing the anthem as a way to promote Juneteenth during the show. God, if Trump would have just signed that one like he said he was going to, this could have been reframed totally differently, but here we are. So we are reflective of the time, she said, just weeks after President Biden signed into law. Yeah, yeah, took credit for somebody else's ideas, exactly what Joe Biden does. Juneteenth, I don't care what the rest of this stuff is, but it's just more divisive shit that people say, you know what, it's just helping people. What does it do? Just sing the song, bigot. Okay, well, how about paying homage to one of the most central tenets of American society? The American dream, after all. The right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, okay? We can take a look at all of the crap that's been going on, but that central core figure is something that all good faith people, regardless of where you find yourself on the political spectrum, should be trying to achieve, or at least striving to achieve. And the one person that I'm bodies America better than anyone else is Captain America, right? Should be. It's fucking in his name, right? Part of his slogan. But in another episode of politics ruining everything, remember this is the same run from the same racist asshole that made Jordan Peterson fucking Red Skull, the arch nemesis of Captain America. All of a sudden he's become a nihilistic shit heel and no longer believes in the American dream. Why would anybody be paying attention to comic books at this point? Well, nobody is because it's out of like the top 25, if not the top 50 best selling comic books in America. All of them have been outstripped by Japanese manga at this point. Mostly because people around the world believe in the American dream. Okay, there's no Canadian dream. There's no England dream. American culture won the day a long time ago. And you can go ahead and you can rewrite history. You can say that there's a black national anthem. There's always been a black national anthem. Trans women are women. And all of this other happy communist horseshit out there. But the American dream is, a still, is still alive and well. Even if it's not in modern media. Par for the course for contemporary Marvel writing. The premier issue of the publisher's star-spangled summer crossover, the United States of Captain America, has revealed that the original super soldier himself, Steve Rogers, no longer believes in the concept of the American dream. Why would he do that? Released on June 30th, the first issue of Christopher Cantwell written and Dale Eaglesham illustrated miniseries opens literally the first page of the story with the solemn Rogers staring out of his Brooklyn apartment and looking back on the past career as a star-spangled avenger yep so even though that there is a new writer in place because that fucking racist tanahisi coates who said that he felt nothing and in fact the only thing he felt was contempt when people were dying on 9 11 i shit you not we've covered that as well i'd be out the door and then now writing for the new superman movie which is going to be black superman no, 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 not the already established in lore that there is a black Superman or another black superhero that uh, DC could have been 
talking about, no, 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 it's gonna be that Clark Kent, you know, that white guy with the fucking box head and the little curl that comes down. Yeah, no, that's just gonna be a black guy now. And it's gonna be written by that racist Ta-Nehisi Coates who made Jordan Peterson Red Skull. So, that same through line is going to be continuing with these two fucking dickheads. Beginning with a memory of his now iconic line, I'm loyal to nothing except the dream, uttered the admonishment of a warmongering U.S. military, military general during an investigation into the origins of jingoistic supervillain Nuke, Daredevil number one, yep, don't know. Rogers finds himself in disbelief at how I actually said that once. Could you fucking imagine? Could you fucking imagine just rewriting history in front of your eyes? 1986, the last decade that comics were a fucking decent medium. And then now, what do you get as soon as you open up a fucking Captain America book? Okay, uh, that's the front page. You got all of the Captain Americas and the only one that really, you know, it continues. You got all of the different iterations of it and including the stupid looking former Falcon on there. But the only one that really matters is Steve Rogers because he needs to continue to be brought back because every single time that Marvel tries to put the mantle of Captain America on a different person, whether it be Bucky Barnes or someone else, Sam Wilson, their fucking comic book fails because they try to stuff in stupid shit like this. I'm loyal to, ever, to nothing except the dream. I actually said that once. Here's the thing about the dream though. The dream isn't real says the millionaire asshole self-inserting himself into a very popular product well once popular product let's be totally fair writing from a place of absolute privilege trying to tell everyone else out there don't believe in the american dream just go ahead believe in nothing strive for nothing don't bother trying to improve yourself just languish in your own shitty life while the people continue at the top you know the guys who actually write this stuff they can milk the property dry Oh, but it'll probably be a story about how he ends up finding his way back into American life and starts believing in the dream over and over again. It'll be a redemption story. There's a way to tell it, and it's not like this. Not him denouncing everything from the outset. You could have Steve Rogers feel like it's failed a bunch of people out there, but then at the same time still fighting through and using the system in order to make people's lives better. But no, no, you'll go ahead and you'll tell your fucking redemption story that so many people will go out there and flock to and watch, and read rather, by poisoning the well like this. It's fucking stupid. Nobody cares about comic books at this point because it's all this same nihilistic racist shit that they put out there. Hate your country, but then at the same time bow at the altar of big government. See, it just doesn't fucking make sense. And then of course linger in that nihilism, and then if you live in San Francisco, don't worry, you can go ahead and fucking benefit from all that racism, of course. Because petty theft under $950 is no longer something that you can enforce. I, I, I shit you not, and this has been going on for a while, so now Target's going to remove all six of their locations in San Francisco, Walgreens has done or is closing most if not all of their locations as well, other businesses are also adjusting their hours and doing deals and business through fucking closed doors because they can't stop all the theft that's going on. According to California's Retail Association, three cities in our state are among the top 10 in the country when it comes to organized retail crime, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Sacramento. Yeah, talked about Los Angeles in the previous video, San Francisco we got right here, and then Sacramento, the capital city of California, which is just another democratic shithole. Already we are seeing the negative impact of what is having in San Francisco with stores permanently shutting down or closing early. It has become one of the most pres pressing issues in our city today, but you haven't heard fuck all about it. Target has now acknowledged that San Francisco is the only city in America where they've decided to close some stores early because of escalating retail crime. For more than a month, uh, we've been experiencing a significant and an alarming rise in theft and security incidents in San Francisco stores. Similar to reports of other retailers in the area, Target isn't the only store in San Francisco to make changes because of the continuous shoplifting. After 10 p.m., the 7-Eleven on Drum Street in the Financial District, so not exactly a slow Lummy part of town only does business through a metal fucking door a 7-eleven after 10 o'clock through a metal fucking oh my god shithole this is what happens one party rule and this is what you get when you have an ineffective opposition okay because shit like this is only allowed to prosper 
when idiots go unchecked. Trust me, I don't want Republicans or conservatives running anything else the same degree that Democrats run stuff. I think that would be just as equally retarded because you need the conflict between both sides to hash out what needs to happen, which would be beneficial for everyone. You just don't see that anymore. You have weakling Republicans like Mitch McConnell or Aaron O'Toole, and then you get authoritative leftists like Justin Trudeau and Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, whatever. We need something in the middle. Something approximating the middle. I don't even know what the middle is at this point. The fucking Overton window has shifted so far to the fucking left. Because, yeah, I don't know if you guys seen this video here, but maybe we'll just play some stills from it. But, yeah, you can see the dude loading up a fucking trash bag, and then the, yeah, security officer is like, oh, no, I'll just go ahead and take a half-hearted swipe at that. And then, yeah, the dude's just allowed to fucking carry out because you can't go after anybody less than $950. You, they face no recourse whatsoever. It's fucking stupid. Walgreens has already closed several stores for the same reason and security guards like Kevin Greathouse are told not to physically engage while we're with those shoplifting because the DA is not going to charge anybody it's going to be lawsuits obviously we don't want ourselves or anyone else getting injured while they're attempting to make out with these apprehensions and leave it to law enforcement said Greathouse he carries with him a handgun a taser and pepper spray but thankfully he's never had to use them on the other hand he says people shoplifting have at times threatened him with a knife cool I don't have any intentions of getting stabbed for $60 worth of stuff. Yeah, that's where it starts. That's where it starts. Well, actually, that's the second step of things. Because last summer, what was it? Ah, oh, it's just a window. Ah, oh, it's just somebody's business. But now they're open. Ah, it's just some stuff at the store. They can go ahead and replace that stuff. Most of those places are franchises. Owned by somebody who isn't a multi-millionaire somebody who's just trying to turn a buck most people who own franchises in your town own like what five or six of them maybe and if they're lucky they're working what 18 20 hour days they might make six digits but these are people trying to get by too and there's only so much money that the insurance out there can go ahead and spray around so that's why these businesses are closing up that's why they're changing the way that they're doing things because well you let one party insanity run over everything this is what you get. You get apathetic security guards and apathetic police officers because they know if they go ahead and they chase after this fucking asshole, he's not going to get charged for the crime that he commits. But if he knocks him off of his bike and he scuffs up his elbow, that officer is going to get charged with assault and battery. So what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to do nothing. And then you're going to let one of the nicest cities in the entire fucking world become an open air toilet, which it already is. You can thank Gavin Newsom for that one as well. Don't worry, it could get totally worse. You could still have more churches in your city burning, in your entire country burning as well. So we talked about this for Canada Day, right? This isn't a rerun of that story as well. More fires in BC that are deemed suspicious in the wake of what's being found at these residential schools. It's not the way to do it. There are other churches being vandalized at the same time. It's just this racial division that's been sown it's what happens when it goes unchecked like we seem to leap past the united states racial tension but the people burning this stuff down and vandalizing these churches they're just do-gooder white people because yeah there's another church uh, this one was in vancouver right as you can see yeah uh we'll just go ahead and full screen it yeah as you can see throw an orange paint on a church and yeah that uh that lady there looks awfully awfully white and then same there yeah uh, a little bit orange fucking racist that's the one doing these vandalisms okay it's one of these phony fucking race wars that if they don't go unchecked end up with churches churches with long fucking histories churches that had nothing to do with these fucking residential schools those people are long dead they're long gone and then also you get your history re rewritten you let you let statues get torn down Last month, it was John A. McDonald being forcibly removed, voted unanimously by the city council of the original capital city of Canada, Kingston, Ontario. And then in Winnipeg, important for its own reasons, mostly because of what happened around the Red River area back in, what, the early 1900s with stupid Louis Riel. You have statues of Queen Elizabeth and Queen Victoria forcibly torn down by applauding stupid groups of people right in front of capitol buildings as well 
not a police officer to be found to stop this lawless action. Protesters in Manitoba spent Canada Day on Thursday ripping down statues of Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Victoria. Vandals toppled the prominent depiction of the nation's founding monarch in front of Manitoba's legislature on, in Winnipeg during broad daylight, according to the video. Yeah. Nearby, another statue of Queen Elizabeth II was ripped down while police reportedly stood by and did nothing. According to Rebel News, more than 24 hours after the incident, Manitoba Premier Brian Pallister, the lockdown king, and the one who threw Maxime Bernier in jail for a few hours, but he's a conservative. Let's see what this fucking fruitcake had to say in a statement. The actions by individuals to vandalize public property at the Manitoba Legislature Building July 1st are unacceptable. Public property? How about statues of historical significance? They are a major setback for those who are working towards real reconciliation and do nothing to advance the support goal. You should be fucking drug out like those statues were. Honestly. Try to placate the fucking mob. They don't care. They don't care. They just want to burn it all down. Those who commit acts of violence will be pursued actively in the courts. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. How are you going to identify anybody? You're not. Your police officer stood by and allowed this to happen. You're not going to be going after anybody. There's going to be no charges laid in this. Just like there were no charges for the initial statue being torn down in the Toronto area. And if it wasn't going to be torn down, you were just going to have your city government vote unanimously to remove these very problematic statues. All leaders of Manitoba must strongly condemn acts of violence and vandalism. At the same time, we must come together to meaningfully advance reconciliation. Why don't you fuck off? Why don't you fuck off? If he gets reelected, Manitoba should just fucking fall into the Bay of Hudson. Fuck the rest of the country. I don't care. Split it right down the middle. Fucking worthless sack of shit. No mention of his ha significant historical consequences of those two women there. But I guess they're a part of the problematic past. So you don't want to listen to those female voices. That was a warning on the eve of Independence Day. Don't let your country become a shithole like Canada has. And strive for a better opposition party because you got Brian Pallister who's, he's a conservative guys, release shitty fucking weak need statements like that. We're going to talk about said terrible administration next uh, because we got Trump dunking on idiots and then we got Biden just being himself, which is by de facto an idiot. And then Kamala Harris... Boy, are things getting spicy for her. And 2024 looks like it could be a, a real humdinger, if I may be so bold. With that said, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.